Distribution provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash this weekend for a free $200 credit. Hey everybody, hey everybody, it's This Week in Startups, our Startup of the Week edition, and today we have Branch.com uh, from the obvious corporation, Evan Williams and Biz Stone's um, corporation, and Jason Goldberg. Right I was about to add that guy, I was about to add yeah. Jason in there, it's not you like you were going to leave him out. I'm not going to leave anybody out, Tyler, <laughs> I'm, a co I'm comprehensive when it comes to my intros. Uh, we have the founder of Branch.com, which is a startup that a lot of people are buzzing about, stick with us. Ah, uh, yes, everybody. Ah, uh, yes. Welcome to This Week in Startup. What I got? Too many buttons open here. What's going on here? We got a box. Little East Coast. Little summer, East Coast. Summertime. I open my shirt up a little bit over here. <laughs> I saw Doug Christie last night, and I was like, wow, there's a 150-pound... If I added 150 pounds, that would be me as a politician. How oh, funny. Did you see his RNC? Uh... No, I didn't watch it. He, like, opened the RNC. You know, guys, really a big guy. Sure. Um, but he, he gave a pretty good talk. He was talking about his mom for, like... You know, half an hour, or whatever. But that, that guy's going to run for president, I think, and next. And uh, he got a chance of winning. Pretty convincing, like you know, like real, like Tony Soprano kind of like. Listen, we got hard decisions to make, and we got to make these hard decisions. And my mom said, you got to be respected if you're going to be loved. And well, you know, yeah. right now these Democrats, they want to be loved, but they don't care about being respected. <laughs> you got to be respected in yeah. order to be loved. That's the way my mom taught me. And it's just like, yeah. wow, hmm, this guy's pretty interesting. Just, yeah, it's pretty interesting. In the we had space. some politics here yesterday. What was that? Yeah, yeah. We had uh, Bob Kerry yes. came by. I guess he's running for senator of Nebraska. Again. And, uh, again, yeah. And uh, he just came by to say hi to a few folks. But yeah, I, you know, I'm not into politics. I get invited to a lot of political things. Yeah. It's not really my thing. Well, they all want to get into tech now. Yeah, they all want to be involved in tech. And, you know, I find the whole thing like... They want to be involved if you write them a check or if, you know, it's like, it's pretty obvious what's going on. They want to be involved wherever the money is. And they want, they, tech, yes, exactly. Yeah. If tech did not have right. a bunch of billionaires or centimillionaires or millionaires or whatever, right. people who could write maximum donations, I don't think they would be super courting us, to be right. honest. Right. Um, and I watched over 20 years how they just really became very interested in the internet industry. Now, I do believe it's also because communication tools sure, are critical, very powerful. fundraising tools, social oh, yeah. media. You know, I don't think that we're having like a social media election. I mean, that's kind of nonsense, don't you think? Like, I do. I mean, yeah, you might get people talking about it on social media, but the fact is, old people vote, young people don't vote, and that and that's what happens. And, and old people vote based on. As soon as you can start voting on Facebook, then it might matter. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. How many coins do I need to do? Right. <laughs> hey, listen. Um, this is our Startup of the Week episode, and it's a very cool uh, little series we've been doing thanks to our friends at SendGrid. And uh, if you don't know SendGrid, well, where have you been? Uh, SendGrid is the industry leader when it comes to delivering transactional emails. Tyler, what's a transactional email? Well, when you get an email, ba like a receipt after you make a transaction. Sure. Or a thank you. Yep. For being a customer. Or if you sign up for a service and somebody friended you. Sure. From Sweden. Yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps, yeah. Perhaps. When are you going back to Sweden? I'm going back next week. You are? I am. Well, this is getting serious. On the... Who's the girl? I got it. You haven't even shared a photo of the girl yet. I know there's a girl involved. <laughs> Nobody goes to Sweden three times <laughs> in six months if it's not for a girl. <laughs> Jesus. Listen. Uh, so anyway, transactional emails are the ones... Like he's saying, you know, registration confirmation, email reset, um, you know, password reset, all that kind of good stuff. And SendGrid is the leader in that. And if you try to build that stuff yourself, you're going to be there's aside. No, there's just, no point. There's no point. The math doesn't work until you get to what size? A billion emails. Yeah. yeah maybe if you were Google, you would write that right. yourself and not right. use SendGrid. Or if you're but otherwise, eBay. it literally doesn't make sense to do it. Literally doesn't. And I bet yeah. you there's some big client out there like Yahoo or eBay or Google who's considering using like a SendGrid or something like that because it's just going to work and they're the experts at it. And why should you spend your time trying to figure out how to get into people's inboxes and not their email boxes and get email servers running um, to do this? And if you start scaling, what happens if you start scaling like Pinterest did or other people and the emails don't start getting through and, you know, friend confirmations don't get through and people purchasing based, you know, wow, now you're screwed and you could totally screw up your viral, your viral uh, coefficient mm -hmm. because people are not getting the emails. Well, guess what? Foursquare, Pinterest, StumbleUpon, and Pandora are using SendGrid. If it's good enough for them, it is absolutely good enough for I, you. I personally and their API it. makes custom integration easy, analytics dashboard included. It's super simple. I personally endorse it. Love it. 
Awesome. There you go. Well, there you have it, folks. And I personally endorse it as well. Thank you, Sengrid, for sponsoring the Startup of the Week. Hey, uh, today we're going to talk about Branch at Branch, branch.com. Uh, it's founded um, uh, by Josh Miller, who we have on the line. And it was incubated out of the Obvious Corporation, which um, is the incubator, accelerator, think tank. I don't know exactly how Evan Williams and Bizstone um, and Jason Goldman... Um, describe it, but it's basically like their little think tank, and they have a couple of companies coming out of it every couple of years. Um, and I guess these guys started out of Betaworks, um, and they recently launched, they've raised $2 million uh, from Obvious and Silicon Valley Angels, Betaworks, and David Tisch, all great people, uh, many of which have been on um, the show. Welcome to the program, Josh Miller. Thanks for having me. Really excited to be here. Uh, so tell me, what is the mission of branch.com uh, so we want to rethink conversations online which is which is a, a very big task but I was uh, interning for my set for Center Fine site actually of California in Washington DC and I am very opinionated for better and worse and I would read an article and wanted to share my opinion and just felt like there was nowhere to do that mm. you know I'd go down the comment sections and I'd find Raiders fan 27 giving me a hard time and you know I'd post you know a daily show clip on Facebook and my college counselor would go on a rant about the tea party. I, I just didn't find like there was a place to have an intimate conversation. Um, so I thought about where do I share my opinion in the real world and it's around a dinner table. It's, you know, over beers with my friends it's at a coffee shop. So we're trying to replicate the kind of real world conversations you have online. And these real world conversations, they don't occur on Twitter because Twitter is limited to 140 characters. You're saying they don't occur on Facebook because Facebook is everybody in your world, and God knows you don't want to have a conversation about politics with everybody you know, family and friends and coworkers. Right. Um, and and it does, where was this going on? Mean, and underneath blog posts, you said it doesn't work because it's a bunch of anonymous cowards. Right. And even, I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, some people mean very well in the comment sections, but I think the problem with that too is that if you think about a real world conversation, if you're at a dinner party. At a certain number of people, the dinner table fractures off into two sets of conversations because only so many people can talk at once. So even if you have an interesting conversation in the comment section, uh, which is very rare, I think, there are 10, 20, 30 people trying to get their opinion in, and it can be very chaotic and hard to follow. So the truth is what you're saying in a blog post, typically you'll have 30 conversations going on, and it's impossible to follow. And what you're trying to do is maybe branch those out into their own branches and so one, one blog post might branch out into 20 different discussions. Right, and one thing, you know, people like to talk about branch and compare us to comment sections. I think the other comparison that we like to make is, you know, there's all this talk about, are we in a bubble? You know, it, you know is this the 90s all over again? And, you know, there have been so, there's been blog posts after blog posts after blog posts, and all those blog posts reference each other, but the authors never have a conversation with each other. So, you know, there was a branch called, are we in a bubble? where M.G. Seeger wrote to Nick Bilton and Chris Saka and Paul Kodrowski, and they had a back and forth about, okay, I think we are for this reason, I don't think we are for that reason. Um, so it's not only kind of elevating the comment section dialogues up, it's also taking the monologues that are blog posts and tweets and turning them into co direct conversations. And so in a way, you can draft off of what's going on out there in, in blogs, but if people don't want to create a blog post, which is a solitary thing, you can sort of fire up a group blog post in a way. That's, yeah, that's exactly what I've done. That for me, I found that blogging was this really like unattainable, awkward medium. So like I'd end up with like 30 drafts in my draft folder. You know, I'd walk down the street, have this great idea, end up revising it 10 times, it would never go anywhere. And even if it did go somewhere, no one reads my blog. So instead, I kind of like threw out this half-baked idea in the form of a paragraph, rope in a couple people I trust, and it turns into this interesting conversation. Um, so yeah. Um, and. What was it like being at Obvious Corporation? How did you wind up at Obvious, and what is the arrangement that they make with a startup? How, how does it work? Is it like Y Combinator? Is it like Techstars? How does it work? Yeah, no, I, it, I mean, it, it was amazing. Biz, I mean, it is amazing. Biz, Ev, Jason, they all have so many learnings from Blogger and Twitter, two platforms that have just fundamentally changed the way we exchange information in the world. So, you know, as we were, as we were strategizing about the direction to take branch and what to build and what not to build, they were able to say, oh, you know, at Blogger, uh, we ran into trouble when we did it, like, when we did this like that, and at Twitter, you know, this worked really, really well, so we'd encourage you to do that. So it was this great almost like mentorship relationship where they wouldn't say, we think branch should be this. They would, we would go to them and say, hey, we're considering building X, Y, or Z, and what do you think? Uh, and they could offer a helpful anecdote. So it, it was incredibly valuable. It is incredibly valuable. 
Um, Jason Goldman, who is the VP of product at Twitter, actually moved back to New York with us and works in our office out of Betaworks. Um, so, I mean, it, it's just, it's invaluable. It's been amazing. Um, so here, if I, I'm, I'm at the site, you guys can pull up my screen, and I see there's an interesting conversation going around about where do you want to go to the movies. I can basically say, uh, I can request to join it, and it says, have a unique perspective, type a one-sentence summary, and I say, well, um, <laughs> I go to the movies at the top three theaters uh, in Los Angeles. Right. Um, Park Light. And I formerly went to the horrible ones in New York City. Hmm. And then I request to join the conversation. So essentially, why do I have to request to do that? It seems kind of annoying to me. I just, I have information I want to share. Why can't I just share? Right. See, that's, that, that's the thing. Um, you, in the conversation, you can only have so many people talk at once. So of course you want to share, but so might 30, 100 other people. Uh, that, that, that doesn't make for a great conversation. So we make it really, really easy for you to ask to join from anyone in the branch. And I pro I'm guessing that you will be accepted. And if in the, you know, the off chance that you aren't invited in, you can branch that conversation off and start your own thread about your favorite movie theaters. And we'll link your branch back to that original conversation as well. So, um, ah, it's supposed so to be very instead of just joining that conversation, I could have branched it. Right, you can do that. You can click that little icon in the bottom right, uh, yeah. and it'll grab that post, and you'll be, yep, branch this. In the so Josh, this essentially is, for the first time, technologically very closely mirroring what happens in reality around verbal conversations. That, that's, our, that's the mental model we're going for, our dinner table conversations. Because yes. when, you're at a di um, when you're at a dinner table, there is this sort of like moment of, through body language, somebody asking to say something, <clears throat> right, and you do sort of by body language grant them permission to speak, or right. not. So it's mimicking and, like real human behaviors, which I think is really brilliant. Thank you. I, I, and I would say that he actually maybe a uh, well, John Borthwick, the the head of BetaWorks here, likes to um, compare them to uh, cocktail party conversations, mm -hmm. uh, kind of for that reason that you might be standing in a group of three people and some other guy might walk up, and like you said, like you can kind of give him the shoulder if you don't really, you know, you're having a great conversation, or you can. Let him in, and then he can introduce himself, and you bring him in the conversation. Um, and so, yeah, exactly. Trying to replicate that in and out, and you'll find that you know, in the how to blogs, uh, or sorry, are we in a bubble conversation? By the end of it, there were like 20 people that had contributed. But if you really you read the conversation, you'll notice that people come in and out, and Neil Jaff Dash drops off, and Chris Saka comes on in. So um, it's very fluid, just like a dinner party or a cocktail party. Now, I can't search and find all the branches that are in the system. Why not? Um, we are, we're big on get a product out there, get feedback from users and iterate. So there are, I promise you, a laundry list of features that we would love to have. Oh, okay. That wasn't there. intentional. That's just time. Exactly. Yes. But there's no reason that we want to hide. If, if we, we want to do a lot better job at servicing branches that you might be interested in. You'll notice that in the middle section it says just started. And those are all branches that haven't, that aren't interesting yet. So whereas most sites are like, we want to show you the best content that we think is most personalized to you. We kind of want to show you the conversations that could use an extra kick that might that might need another participant that you might have knowledge to contribute to. Um, so in the future, you'll notice you're seeing branches in Spanish and uh, exactly that's a that works. That's exactly what we want to happen. You're an angel. You see that? You hop in. You might ask to join. So we'll do a better job of that in the future. But for now, we just wanted to get it out there. And so now, when I'm looking at this conversation, which to me looks like Twitter in the format, right? Short little post with the avatar on the top left, but there's no limit on the length, is there? What's the length I can do? For so the, the length of an actual post is actually 750 characters. Okay. And we, we messed around with that a lot. First it was unlimited, then it was 250, then 500, now 750. And what we're trying to replicate once again is that if you're in a group with you know three, four people in a circle having a conversation, no one goes on a rant for 10 minutes. And if they no. do, that's really annoying. Uh, so 750 seemed like the right little blur. And when I click, uh, when I'm looking at this conversation, I can either join the, ask to join this one, or I can click this little branch this. And if I branch right. it, essentially I'm making a thread on that I control. And I can say, right. well, let me add uh, steep um, decline uh, to this and solicit more by posting to Twitter. And then right. um, I just and you can even it. edit your tweet if you want to change the CTA. Yeah. And then I just say here, um, uh, Will would be interesting, interested 
in Tyler's thoughts. Um, and now I'm starting a thread that people can find on the original thread, correct? Yep, that's correct. And um, hopefully, you know, if, the, if the, the poster of the original thread likes what we have to say or thinks it's interesting, he might ask to join your conversation. So once again, we want there to be a lot of fluidity between these branches. Uh, interesting. And so what's the, I mean, obviously, I hate to ask this question so early on, but is there a unique revenue model you have for this? Um, or is it yeah. just get big? I'm, I, I'm, I'm known to have really crazy ideas that are probably just ludicrous and won't work. But one thing that I think is really interesting about this is if you think about the type of, types of conversations you have, there are a lot of topics that are really heavily monetizable. Uh, an example of that, the other day I was in a, in a branch about like, hey, well, you know, I got some time this week and what movie should I see? Mm -hmm. uh, there's an example where we could very easily show you show times and have you purchase tickets to the movies that you talk about in your thread. Another is, you know, there, I think in the top right of that screen, it's what are your three favorite places to see a movie? Once again, you mentioned a theater, that theater might show an ad saying, hey, here's what's playing tonight. Um, so cost per, click, a, cost per click ads, basically. You could just put AdSense in and it would obviously be highly targeted. Right, and I, I mean, I'm really interested in, in, custom, in custom widgets. So if you think about, you know, the new Bourne movie comes out and 21st Century Fox wants to promote that, we might let them promote the Bourne trailer as a topic to talk about and at the very bottom a widget to, like, look at showtime. Ah, so you think that sponsored discussions would be interesting? Oh, absolutely. I know The Economist has their, uh, their debates, and they make, a, they make a lot of money from sponsors like ExxonMobil talking about the future of energy. Um, and I, you know, in our early days when we were called Roundtable, actually when I first met with you for the first time, we had already had brands like Samsung and GE reach out to us um, asking to sponsor Roundtables at the time. Um, so yeah. whenever we decide that's important, I, I, I think that um, sponsorships is, 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 uh, is kind of low-hanging fruit. And uh, tell me about this um, Economist Roundtables. What's that about? How, how do they operate? So I'm actually not sure what the Economist, that's the New York Times. I meant the yeah. Economist, the, the magazine. Yeah. They have a, a debate series where like, they have Oxford-style debates and, and bring in usually like two professors, mm. and they'll have an Oxford-style debate. Um, you'll notice that it's very wonky and lots of text and gray, just not that visually enticing. Um, but I think it's a, it's a cool concept to get a couple experts together to talk about the future of education or arts funding or whatever it may be. Yeah, and... Um, every day do a different one, and you think somebody will sponsor that. What, what, how do you defend against, um, you know, if, if Exxon is doing energy and people are trashing Exxon, I mean, how, how do you mitigate uh, or manage that? Uh, I don't know. I, to be honest, have not thought that far ahead. Um, hmm. But we think that sponsorships will be definitely an opportunity down the road. But one, you know, actually to bring back up Obvious Corporation, one of the reasons we chose them as our lead investors is they kind of said to us, look, we were in this unique situation where we are financing this out of our personal money, and we want you to build something that's going to change the world and completely change the way people communicate, and that's a, a very audacious mission, and it's going to take a lot of work, and we want you to just focus on that and not worry about the financing side of things from now. So, you raised so I, know that that's, I know that's, I know that's the, how most startups tend to operate anyways that are venture back, but we definitely have this unique model where Ev, Biz, and Jason are backing us personally. Um, um, so raised two million dollars you got a team of about 10 people or so yes, yeah yep. and so that means you have the ability to go for 18 months or so and figure this out um what what, what do you think will be success what can you say one year from now branch will have blank um and what would you like to be able to have be true? Well, so we just, like you said, we just launched two weeks ago, and our goal for launch was we want to see the majority of conversations not be about tech-related topics. Mm -hmm. um, and we have succeeded at that so far. It's been really interesting to see the breadth of topics, the breadth of nationalities. You know, one of our largest user bases is from Turkey and Mexico, and that is really, really cool to see. Um, so in a year from now, I don't really have a number in mind, but we want Branch to be the place you turn to talk about whatever you care about. So if you're interested in tech, we want you to immediately think, oh, I should go and branch, and go to branch and see who's talking about that and start a conversation with people or jump into conversation that I think is interesting. Um, so a year from easy. now, branch will be the go-to place uh, for people to start discussions that are important in their lives. Yep, and I, like I said, I, I'm known for having kind of lofty goals that may not be able to be um, reached, but yeah, that's what we're gunning for, and we're really excited about it, because you know, one thing, one question I ask a lot is usually you ask them that you say, all right, what do you do for a living? They say, oh, you know, I'm a tech writer. They say, okay, what, what are some of your hobbies? And they say, you know, oh, I, li I like to mountain bike. Oh, great, where do you talk about mountain biking? 
they don't have an answer. They don't tweet about mountain biking. They don't post it to Facebook with their college friends. The only place you can do that is somewhere like a forum, which right. for most people is kind of this outdated, archaic form of communication. So we really do think as audacious as that goal is, oh, we're going to be the place to go to talk about stuff in the world. We actually think there's a huge hole right there, and um, we're pretty excited about the way we're building it. So you see yourself replacing, in a way, forums like vBulletin or PHP bulletin board systems that haven't changed in, frankly, 15 years. Oh, yeah, Usenet, The Well, forums, subreddits. We think all of these communities are fascinating, and we think all of them haven't evolved in 10 years, and some of them are dead. Um, the interesting... But I think but isn't the interesting thing about those forums is that none of them ever became big businesses? How does yours become a big business? I think, well, I mean, Usenet and The Well, those were never trying to become big well, businesses. Well, The Well was trying to become a business, but yeah, it was an access business. But um, certainly other people tried to make message board forums and companies around that. It never really became a business. Deja News, I no, guess, was In the a biggest. weird way, MySpace is business was largely built on their... Yeah, but it was still profiles. End. There wasn't like there was... No, I, honestly, what, a, a forum about a topic. What's the yeah. biggest company that was maybe a I'm, topic Maybe based? I'm projecting personally onto this, but I spent about three months, in, in, I'm embarrassed to admit, in the religion forum in MySpace. Like, oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't even go outside of the house for three months. <laughs> really? Just, just talking in, about religion? Can, yeah, absolutely. You could have said the same thing about Twitter. Like, what was the biggest company that did status updates? AIM was going down. And look at Twitter today. So I, I see your logic, but I think that it's more interesting to look and say, wow, you talk to someone that's a member of a forum, and they are fanatical about how great it is. And they know those members of the forum, and they go there every day. And then you look at the forum, and it's like, wait, that still works? Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, you make a great point. It'll be really hard, but we're really excited about it. And I know that I want to talk about politics, and I got nowhere to go. So if I can at least fill that void for me, I'll be really happy. But, See, that's um, a good answer. Are... That's a good answer. I asked that question. That's more like a qu see how you respond to gut it kind check of a, question. That's a yeah. gut check and see. I like his answer, though, because yeah. he's got a little bit of the moxie as an entrepreneur. Uh -huh. Like, just because it didn't become a business last time doesn't mean it won't today. And I don't need to know, well, here's I mean, the Josh, what you said was, I don't need to know how it becomes a business. What I need to know is are people passionate about it and will they participate? And if I, there are passionate people participating in something, you think you're smart enough to figure out how to make that into a business? Yeah, we, agree. Saw, we saw Dutch librarians going back and forth yesterday in Dutch about some like, yeah, I don't even know. And I think that's a testament to you say, here's a place where you talk about what you're interested in with people that you trust hmm. and they know what to do. <laughs> and I think that simplicity um, really speaks to a lot of people and I think we'll, we'll Hopefully last to be successful. But also social networks uh, as a ha, yeah. as an enabler now make it viable to retry to revolutionize the concept of a bullet. It does help you. The social media, I guess, does help you get people to those conversations right. very quickly. Right. With the, basically right. invites and just people doing that. Um, so uh, how did you, this is your first startup, I believe. How did you wind My up? First job. <laughs> first job, first startup, first working experience, I guess. Uh, how did you hook up with uh, Betaworks slash um, Obvious Corporation? What was, what was it that got you in, in bed with these two amazing uh, incubators and investor groups being essentially a nobody in the business? Right. So actually, Betaworks came after Obvious. And before that was uh, Jonah Peretti, who is the co-founder of, or was, was the co-founder of the Huffington Post, is now the uh, CEO and founder of BuzzFeed. How did you find we, him? I, I was interning at um, Meetup last summer and met a co-founder and you know, and after I was started hacking on this project called Roundtable, which was an early prototype of branch. Um, someone said, Hey, you should meet this guy Jonah Freddy and person like, All right, who's this guy Jonah? Wikipedia I'm like, Whoa, yeah, that would be awesome. Went to his office, showed him sketches on a piece of paper, he said, I think this is a really cool concept, it makes a lot of sense to me. I don't know if this has become a thing. I know you guys are supposed to go back to school, but you know, I'd love to help out for free. Just think it's cool. Let me know. I can help. And Jonah's kind of endorsement uh, kind of and our, and our passion for the topic kind of compelled us to leave school, at which point we were bootstrapping uh, the company from Dogpatch Labs in New York for the first three months of, uh, um, of the, com the company, uh, which was September, October, November. Then uh, Business Insider wrote about us as one of like, the 20 most innovative startups. Investors started calling. We decided to go out to San Francisco to meet folks out there. And everybody we met with, every entrepreneur said, you've got to meet the obvious guys. Like, do you see this as a new type of publishing platform? You know, Ev did that twice. You've got to go talk to them. Um, so via introduction, we ended up meeting them on that trip. Now, is there going to be some confusion because you have Medium coming out? Um, which obviously Ev is very involved with and Biz is very right. involved with. That seems to be 
um, their product, and then you have Branch. And when you look at them side by side, they do feel similar. They're both, um, in some way, um, conversation-based um, products. I mean, I think they're similar in the sense that, you know, as Biz likes to joke, we both want people to type into text boxes on the internet. So we're going for the same market in, in that sense. But I think they're actually extremely complementary, and we're designed to be that way. So whereas Medium is a place where you go to publish your thoughts in a very refined, beautiful way, Branch is more like, all right, here, throw your half-baked inklings and initial reactions out there, have a conversation about it, and then maybe when you refine it, go to Medium to publish it, and then after you've published it, you might want to start a conversation about it. So I think it's actually very uh, cyclical. Um, it'll be a cyclical experience. Uh, and I think Ev's long-term vision for Medium is a lot different than our long-term vision. So um, we're really, really excited about what they're working on and working together in the future. Got it. What about this clean design everybody's going for? I notice everybody looks like Daring Fireball, um, right. you know, the famous blog. What, what's happening in the design of publishing that's making everything look like Daring Fireball? I, you should ask my co-founder, Jemre, our, our, our lead designer. I, um, I, I saw that there were a bunch of pieces about that, about subtle and branch and medium and this whole notion of the clean web. And I'm not sure, but I, I, like, I like the idea of a clean interface that's simple and focused and, and not, um, not overwrought with stuff. Um, so I don't know if it's a thing. I don't know why it's happening, but I can't say that. I, I think it's a reaction it. to Facebook. I think Facebook is so goddamn cluttered that people are just like, it's too much going on on your Facebook page. The left-hand navigation, the right-hand ad navigation, the middle panel, it's like the three-pane thing. It makes me feel like I'm looking at an ex like a bad Excel spreadsheet now. It's like I, face Facebook is just a I disgusting experience. I completely agree, but it's, it's interesting because when I was in middle school, I was on MySpace, and I remember I got to ninth grade, and it was like the coolest thing ever because I got to be in the Santa Monica High School network, and it was like sleek, simple interface. It didn't have like flashing avatars and really crazy things. So it's funny how that now we refer to them as like the, the messy place, which I completely agree with. But I remember the initial lore was it's crisp, it's clean, everyone's profiles look the same. Um, well, here, just like, here's the interesting thing, Tyler. Look at this. Here is my Facebook page, right? Look at that. Oh, yeah, it's like a yeah. damn casino. It looks like, <laughs> I, you know what, it, you're right, Tyler. It looks like, what's a, what's a, what's a Chinese website, like a Tencent? Oh, yeah, or, yes. Uh, like if you look QQ. at QQ, uh, QQ, uh, QQ, yeah, QQ.com. Let's see what that looks like compared to Facebook. Um, and then you look at, well, here, look, here's Facebook, and here's QQ, and like QQ goes on page after page of three column oh, layout wow. of just garbage and like just overwhelming. I mean, it's sort of like more like a Yahoo kind of situation, but it's just oh, totally ridiculous. Then look, fire daring fireball. Oh wow. Like one column, and like the left, and the left-hand column is just like this little tiny membership, blah 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 blah, Plodrex, whatever. And then he has one ad below the fold. Medium, completely one column with a little left thing here, I guess, for the author. Branch, one big column, a little bit of you know functionality on the left or right, but very subtle. Oh, that's my Google Doc. But anyway, it, it is interesting. We're 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 heading away from this kind of like, I mean, God, look at. I mean, this is why Facebook, um, people are going to run from Facebook, I think. It's just too much. I think people are going to run from it. They're going to run to cleaner services, and I think this is why... He has a great point, though. Branch is, is going to do the, well. The cleanliness of Facebook was originally the appeal. It's really amazing right. how it... Maybe it's what it is, is over time you just get compromised so much by features and you compromise so much by the need to have advertising revenue that your service just collapses on itself. And I think that's why some people would say Twitter's in a better position, whereas Facebook is trying to kind of throw these ads on the left and right. Twitter's saying, oh, no, no, we already have the ad unit. It is a tweet, and it's going to be in the same place that your other... Uh, your other so it will never look like ads. But even look at Twitter. Like, here's Twitter today, right? Big, huge left column with, like, who to follow. The reason who to follow is here is because they're right. promoted, because they're trying to make money. And the trends, the reason the trends are here, because they're promoted. And remember that the focus used to be this right-hand column here? And the right-hand column now is the, the left-hand, what used to be the only column, became the right-hand the left -hand, right -hand main column, then it became the right-hand column. It's almost like I preferred when you just could see. But at the same time, yeah. people were saying, 
you remember for yeah. months and months and months, they like, Twitter, please find a way to make money. Like, every, you know what I mean? People, right, people, of course, yes. And now they're, it's interesting, now they're doing it, and people are like, oh, wait a second, yeah. why are you trying to make money? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it is pretty funny, but yeah. that's the tech press. It's yes. different. Yeah. Hey, uh, Josh, what's been, I mean, first-time entrepreneur, um, and everything seems to be going your way. I remember meeting with you, I don't know if it was a year ago, we met when you were doing Roundtable. Everything seems to be going your way. What's been the hardest uh, part of this process. I guess you've been on this journey for about 18 months. Yeah, I, uh, well, it's actually been 11 months now. Um, I think the hardest part, but also the coolest part and most exciting part has been learning all the different parts of the business. You know, people talk a lot about the product and the distribution, like there's hiring, there's accounting, there's legal, there's incorporation, there's taxes. Uh, all that stuff has been, you know, it's a learning experience. Um, and so we're lucky enough where we do have, I think, great mentors and great advisors and people around us to help us. But, you know, it's, it's, it's been, um, it's a lot of balancing that. But it's, it's exciting, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity at the same time. Hey, um, breaking news, everybody. I am now Google Maps famous. Check that out. <laughs> That's awesome. Somebody just, I was just, I happened to open my Twitter during our conversation, and somebody's like, do you know you're Google Maps famous? And I'm like, what? And I guess this is on Google Maps Street View. There is... Funny. A picture of me, and people think that's me. But I, that guy looks like he's about 15 pounds heavier than I am. I don't yeah. think that. I mean, he does. He does look strikingly like me. Yeah. Same height, same hair color. Yep. You know, and, and he and is those, in front of the Mahalo and building he's, in Santa oddly, Monica. He's wearing your shoes too. And he's wearing my shoes. But th that person is distinctly 15 pounds heavier than I am. Josh, continued success um, with the product. It's off to a great start. Um, I will say the problem I'm having right now is I forget about all these good services out there. It does feel like there's too many great options for consumers to express themselves right now. And I think that's going to be the biggest challenge of the business for, <laughs> for folks like Josh is how do, you, how do you make people remember, like I had a branch that I started. I forgot that it started. I get too busy. You know, it, it, you know mm -hmm. the thing about Facebook and Twitter, it's always you know, there for you. I think these things have to really get a core group of users to, to, to be there every day. It's gonna, it's gonna be, a, it's a challenge like any other business, but I do think that'll be Josh's big challenge. Hey, Josh, um, continued success with it, and if people want to follow Josh, he is at Josh M. Is that correct on Twitter? Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me. It was yeah, a you're based in New York now. Yeah, oh, but still I'm based from Santa Monica, so yeah. I'll, I'll have to grab a beer with you sometime soon. Absolutely. And uh, you're hiring anybody right now? Yep, uh, infrastructure engineers. Send them our way. Okay, so um, as you guys know, first name at company name dot com usually goes to the uh, CEO of the company. I'm Jason Mahalo. Yeah, so I'm guessing Josh is Josh at Branch, but I don't know that for certain. Um, so if you are a uh, engineer, email Josh, and uh, I think it's a pretty cool place to work, and he's got backing, so he's not going out of business for at least 18 to 24 months with or without a revenue model. And if he gets any kind of traction, right. this is the kind of stuff people love to invest in. So I think you're going to be very successful. Um, thank you, Jason. Good luck with well. it, Josh. Yeah. Hey, and thank you, SendGrid. Thank you, SendGrid. We could not have done this. We couldn't have talked about Josh's great product without SendGrid um, providing such a great service that they have a marketing budget. I mean, they're so successful. They have enough mm -hmm. money to spend on marketing. That's when you can tell if a company... This is why I think marketing on this show is so brilliant for startup companies, because what it shows is, one, that you get that this show is watched by the you know mm -hmm. insiders, whatever. Number two, people know that you have the ability... And you have marketing because your product's doing so well. I mean, yeah. look at a company like SendGrid. They're doing so well that they can market and they can, and they can reach these customers who watch the show. And I said, on the sh I said on my Twitter, like, God, I don't know what's left for this week in startups. Like, maybe we just interview the next 100, top 100 entrepreneurs and we'll finish up and we'll just end the show. And I was sort of just like, it was like one of those like hazy moments where you're just like, I'm just wondering out loud here. Mm -hmm. I got 100. It was a great ego <laughs> boost because I was like, yeah, maybe we'll just end the show and get the top 50 people we haven't had on. You know, we'll have Elon Musk on, we'll have Zuckerberg on, we'll have Pinkas on, and we'll just end. And people were like, you can't end the show. <laughs> There's all these other new entrepreneurs constantly coming out. And I just thought, you know what, that's kind of right. There are all these other entrepreneurs constantly coming out. Um, but what I really want to do is get an, an office in, or a studio in San Francisco. Yeah. So if we had a studio in San Francisco that was dedicated to us, we could really do some damage. If only somebody had an extra studio or space for a studio for us. In San Francisco, or Palo Alto, a storefront, perhaps, perchance to dream. Not going to end the show. Everybody relax. I was just me needing a little ego gratification. And now that I know that if I tweet I'm quitting something, I'll be like, ah, that's it. I'm I'm quitting the launch conference. We had one more launch conference and it's over. And then everybody like, no. 
You know, people, people don't appreciate you. Know, you people, you're gone. Lo people love the show. Like, I'm getting recognized ev I, everywhere I go now. You're and, getting your beak wet. And you know what's weird? You're I getting have, flown. I, I mean, just I be have honest people, with the audience. Can you be honest with our audience that you're getting flown around the world because of your co-starring role in the show? I get recognized by my voice at parties. Yeah, they, oh, there's they, Tyler's can, Inside. No, no, because You they, haven't done an Insight since 2009. I, <laughs> and you get so much credit, and you're just coasting. <laughs> you're coasting on... You really are coasting. Uh, yeah. Can we admit it? Sure. You're coasting on the previous... You're really not putting as much into the show <laughs> as you used to. You're number one. This is my list here. Because yes, you've been gone go, for a long time. We go, might as well go. clear the air. Number one, clearing the air. You took a six-week vacation. <laughs> I did. You're going to, what, five different countries? Yeah. Seven. That was seven countries. Seven countries. These countries are hiring you as a consultant. They're flying not you all, all... Not all of them. Okay. But a lot of countries <laughs> are flying you around the world. Here's what's going on. Every, every country on the world, in the wants world Wants to right have now. this week in startups. They no, want to no, have no, a Silicon no. Valley. It's they want to have a Silicon they, Alley. Yes. They're they, realizing that the future is tech. They right. want to have their own Silicon Valley. Right. And more specifically, the bigger cities want to be the Silicon Valley of their continent. So right. Chile wants to be Silicon Valley for South America. London wants to be it for Europe. On and exactly. on. Exactly. Continental. And, and then you have the secondary cities that don't want to lose all of their people to that. Ah, so Berlin doesn't hub. want to lose to London. Right. Or Denmark doesn't want to lose people Stockholm to Berlin. Stockholm doesn't want to lose to London or Berlin. And, or Berlin. and the other, uh, the right. other country, Colombia doesn't want to lose. And then to, your beak's getting wet. And you're getting flown around the world, speaking gigs. And just, what was it, four or five years ago, you're going with me yeah. as my handler and processing everything for me and yeah. being my attache. Yeah. And now the attache has become the master. You're going and doing the speaking gigs. I don't have the time to do because well, I got to stay home with my family. Yeah. And you don't have a problem with it. <laughs> you don't seem to have a problem with it. <laughs> I paid my dues. You did, and I don't have a problem with it either. Yeah. Really, what, I mean, I can't go. You, you should go, and they get, they're getting a better deal to go. You speaking gigs last night. You did the big speaking gig at Cole Loft yeah, on that how was good. to pitch and present. Usually, yeah. I would be doing that. I don't have the time, That's and, right. and you're just as qualified as me to do it. So I'm very happy for you. Um, but I, you know, I just who's the girl in, in Sweden? Switzerland. Where are you going? Switzerland or Sweden? <laughs> I'm not touching it. Really? Yeah. Why? The girl in Chile is going to be upset? <laughs> oh, no. Let's not go there. I mean, you, you're checking in on your Facebook. People know you're in seven different cities. What's going on, Tyler? I know you're single, and I know the sh Let me ask you this. I know that the show has helped you professionally with your startup. Okay. I know the show has helped you with all these speaking gigs, and I know it's helped you with all these consulting arrangements to fly around the world. I think I know where this is going. Has the show... <laughs> resulted in Say it. an increase in your <laughs> romantic life. Has your romantic that's, life blossomed that's, that's one way to of the say show? It. That's one way to say it. Has the show resulted in your romantic life blossoming more? Like, have you met girls through the show? Have you met girls who you have an inkling that they saw you on the show and thought you were cute and like, oh, I'd love to meet him when he's in town? Honestly, I don't think so. No? No. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. I don't know. How, you know. I don't. Yeah. We, we do. Do we not know the demographic breakdown on this? Because I, I, I think I it's think the shows. Obviously, it's it probably skews pretty. I've heavy had. Let me put it. This, I've had a lot of people buy me drinks, but they've all been guys. <laughs> so it's. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Tyler is. Uh, Getting a lot of speaking gigs and a lot of flying around the world, but has yet to meet a girl. Still single, still ready to mingle, and still no insights for 2012. What do you mean? We've, we're in September. I, come on, I've had a couple dozen I in 2012. I know, just poking you a little bit. Yeah. Just poking you a little bit. Hey, everybody, thanks. I mean, long way of saying thank you, Sengrid, um, for supporting the program. And it's been a great, I think we're doing like 10 of these, and this is the sixth time we've done it, so four more to go. And I uh, really appreciate it. I hope Sengrid keeps doing this. I'll, I'll keep yeah. doing If Sengrid wants to keep doing it, I'll keep doing it. I like it. Because you know what? I like doing the new companies. Like, see, the thing with Josh is he's a first-time entrepreneur. And we ended the interview at about 30 minutes, and we had a... So he could do such a good interview in 30 minutes, but if we had to go another 30 minutes, he ha doesn't have enough life experience right, yet right, 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 to right. carry that last 20 right. minutes like a George Zachary or right, right. a Mark Pincus or whoever. Yeah, first could. product, yeah. Yeah, first product. So I just love this format. I love the fact that SendGrid gave us this opportunity. So to my friends at SendGrid, thank you. And if you're, if you're a startup company, you really want to say thank you right now to at SendGrid on Twitter. Please, just say thank you at Sengra for sponsoring the Startup of the Week on Twist. It's really been great. And, um, hey, really great job, Brandis. Flawless. Looks like everything's good here, the sound. And if you have, um, 
any ideas of a studio in San Francisco or Palo Alto that would, uh, or somebody who's got space for a studio, do uh, email me, jason at mahalo.com or jason at calacanis.com. And if you have any feedback on the audio or technical issues on the show, uh, yeah, just email team at thisweekend.com, team at thisweekend.com. We're trying to make the sound better and better. That's why we're using these beautiful Shure microphones, the SM7B. And um, I was looking at that other one. What's the other one that Howard Stern uses, that really nice microphone? Uh, Probably uses a Neumann, actually. Neumann is the thing. Mm -hmm. He's a Neumann. It's 3500 for a Neumann. That's right, yeah. And what's the difference between a Neumann microphone? Um, it's a Neumann it has a huge, U87. That's right, a U87. Versus the Shure SM7B. It's just $3,500 versus $350. That's exactly right. Well, you think I could tell the difference between them? You think you could tell the difference between them? Uh, I know both of those mics intimately well and have used them in mm. multiple recordings over the years, so I do know very much the difference. Should I invest $3,500 in my own microphone? Or? Right now, no. You shouldn't get the, the U87 because... Here it is, folks. Not to bore the audience with this no, one. No, that's all right. If they get this point I mean, show, I had a, pretty I had a former life kind of doing this kind of stuff. So yeah. when... That's what Howard <coughs> Stern uses. That's why I right. want to... It's not just the microphone. So the microphone goes into the sound, goes into the cable. Mm -hmm. The microphone goes to a converts it from audio to elect electrical signal. Mm -hmm. And then it goes elsewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Where it has to be converted into digital because it's mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. your digital converter. Mm -hmm. It still has to be, there's three other processes that happen after it's yeah. sent into the microphone that are going to degrade it to the level where the SM7, you see what I mean? It bottlenecks the. Yeah. So. I, I don't think you'll notice that much of a difference until you upgrade the other bottlenecks yeah. to, to be able to handle what that can put in it. Interesting. Well, yeah. If there was, if you're on the, if there's a ridiculously awesome sound engineer out there who would take a look at our stuff, I would like to. I just want to make sure because I think 98 percent of the people listen to the show; they don't watch it. Um, I mean, they may watch it at times, but I just think probably if you looked at the consumption, a lot of people are on their desktop and then they just switch windows. And I, I just would really like to get the. Um, but that's the other thing: is most people are listening to this on iPod earbuds. That's true. Or computer desktop speakers. That isn't going to matter with a yeah. The mic. And what I heard was that that you know the what do they call the thing on a pop or pop whatever? screen? Yeah. Pop screen. They said the Shure has the pop screen In inside it. of That's here. That's right. And so you really, when you're talking into these, you're really supposed to be this close. That's right. And we are usually. Yeah. You about notice how close. I? Well, no. You saw how I am. With yeah. It. Usually you're right up here. Hmm? Should you be almost touching it like this? That's that's how it was designed. Yes. You, it's designed to be right up against it, almost like you can feel the heat of your breath off That's of it. That's right. And so, if we were on NPR. Yeah. And this was, KCRW, the sound of Santa Monica. You're listening to, politics wet, left, right, and center. Today on the program, Doug Christie is somebody who's 150 pounds overweight and has overweight children really qualified to become president of the United States? And should we have an overweight president? With me to join the discussion is Tyler Crowley from the Association of Overweight Americans. Tyler Crowley, welcome to WKCRW. It's a pleasure to be here, Jason. Now, Tyler, you work for the Overweight Americans uh, organization. And uh, exactly how long have you been a fat bastard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna <laughs> <laughs> for people. Can you people, imagine if at NPR somebody calls somebody a fat bastard? <laughs> for, the, for the international listeners who don't have NPR, yeah, that's actually a fairly accurate. Uh, How long have you been um, thinly challenged? <laughs> adverse. Adverse yeah. to weight. Eating, weight adverse. Weight adverse. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you next time on this week in startups.